Okay. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. That's good. All right. Some informations here. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. is there a, a top at the, or is there a box at the top that's kind of blocking the slides at all, or is it just you can just see the slides? Uh, for me, is okay. It looks good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now is uh, two o one. Maybe we can wait for another like uh, one minute. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So uh, today's webinar we set up uh, for one hour, but uh, in case you need more time, I think it's still okay. Okay. Extended. I don't think I have enough. Um, slides for one hour, but I anticipate a lot of no. questions. <laughs> so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the Q&A, I think is a very important session. Right. Yeah. And also today our uh, host uh, Zoom uh, technical support is Jinping Yang. And he's uh, the chair of the CAFA board. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Alicia, for coming and talking to us. For oh, us. yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. OK, so how many participants? Uh, well, 43. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, I think uh, we can start right now. So uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone um, to join the Zoom meeting. Uh, as the weather warms up, snakes have been woke up from the winter dormant and they begin to appear in the environment around us. Whether you are walking in the woods or sidewalks or gardening in the yard, to avoid contacting venomous snakes is the necessary common sense for the personal safety in our daily life. Snake bite is a public health issue that is easily overlooked. Uh, though the exact number of snake bites is unknown, the World Health Organization estimates that uh, 5.4 million people worldwide are bitten by snake each year, and as many as 2.7 million are poisoned, poisoned by snake bites. Field workers and children are the most vulnerable. Children are often injured more severely than adults. Around 81,000 to 138,000 people die each year because of snake bites. To help everyone understand and be able to identify the types of venomous snakes in North Carolina and to learn the basic knowledge and the practical methods of preventing snake bites, the Chinese American Friendship Association of North Carolina invited local uh, snake enthusiast Ms. Uh, Alicia Ballard to share her knowledge and experience in this field. This webinar is hosted by CAFA of North Carolina. For the audience who are not familiar with this organization, CAFA, that is the Chinese American Friendship Association, is a membership-based non-political and non-profit organization founded in 1996 and uh, serve for local Chinese American community by hosting the cultural and the sports events, civic engagements and visa application and, uh, and civil uh, certificate services. The financial support comes from the donations from the small businesses, individuals and membership fees. For more information about the CAFA, please visit website www.ncafa.org. Welcome to join CAFA as a member and welcome to support CAFA. This webinar 
will be recorded for the individuals that cannot come to the meeting today. During the presentation, the audience uh, video and audio functions will be muted and uh, will be unmuted in Q&A session. If you have questions during the presentation, please type it, uh, type it in the uh, ch uh, chat room. The questions will be answered in order. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Alicia Ballard. Welcome. Alicia hey, is a native Carolinian and graduated from NC State University in entomology major. She is a naturalist that appreciates all wildlife, but specifically likes searching for snakes in the wild to photograph. Every year, Alicia takes some vacation days to search for snakes and other wildlife across the United States. Alicia is not only a dedicated scientist in insect pest control industry, but also an experienced beekeeper. Alicia, the podium is yours. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, so I'm Alicia. Um, one of my biggest hobbies is traveling around our state and other states in the United States too look for snakes and to photograph them. I've been up north all the way up to Maine to look for snakes. I've been down south all the way to Florida. The Everglades are a great place to look for snakes. Um, and I've been to like Arizona where there's 14 different species of rattlesnakes to look for all of those and photograph them. And actually next week I'm going out to Kansas to look for certain types of king snakes out there. So big hobby of mine, love it. Um, but yeah, so today um, I wanted to talk to all of you about the snakes that you'll find in North Carolina. Um, coming away from this, I want all of you to be informed and I want all of you to stay alert when you're outside um, gardening or playing outside. Just make sure you watch where you step and everything. But so in North Carolina, we have four different regions, um, and we're going to talk about those today and what kind of snakes you'll find in each re region. This is uh, the mountains, the Piedmont, which is where we're at, the sand hills, which is down south from us, and the coastal plain. Um, in this presentation, there will be snakes that are handled, um, and I just want to note that always use caution when interacting with wildlife and never handle anything that you, that you cannot positively ID. So, let's see, okay. Um, so in North Carolina, we have 37 different species of snake. Um, nine of these species are threatened or endangered and only six of these, six of these species are venomous. Um, there's a lot of diversity in our snake population here and there's a lot of different colors you'll see in the snake world here in North Carolina. Um, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but at the top here um, on the left-hand corner, you have a cotton mouth uh, that has its mouth open um, here. And there's a Carolina pygmy rattlesnake um, and a king snake and rough green snake. And beside that, there's a car scarlet king snake, very colorful individuals. And down on the bottom here, um, there's actually a pine snake. Um, this is one of the rarest snakes in North Carolina. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing two individuals. Um, I'd say that there's probably less than 100 individuals total in North Carolina. These snakes are heavily protected. Um, they're in the Sand Hills region, so you won't see them here. And there's like maybe a good 30 mile radius um, area where you'll find them. And yeah, so. Um, so how exactly do you ID a snake um, here in North Carolina? So when it comes to snake identification, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, do not identify a snake based on head shape. To the right here, you can actually see a harmless juvenile black rat snake. Um, on the left, its head is actually flattened. They do this because it's a defensive mechanism that they will perform when they feel threatened by a predator. Um, and so actually on the right, which is what it typically looks like, that's its non-defensive head posture. Um, so don't, 
don't ID a snake based on its head shape at all. Um, and the next, do not identify a snake based on pupil shape. Uh, snake pupils can dilate and look round. So on the right here, you actually see two different copperheads. Um, these guys are brothers, actually. And so this is a venomous snake, uh, probably the most notorious venomous snake in North Carolina. But on the top here, you can see that its pupil is dilated. Um, and on the bottom, its pupil is, it has that classic like cat eye shape. Um, so there's a lot of guides that will say that venomous snakes typically have like a cat eye shaped pupil um, and that they're, they're dangerous, you know, watch out for them. But as you can see, they can be round or um, a cat eye shape. So don't ID a snake based on the pupil shape. And then also if a snake rattles its tail, this does not always mean that it's a rattlesnake or venomous. Um, many non-venomous snake species will rattle their tails um, to scare and intimidate predators. Like um, this actual, actually this juvenile black rat snake here will actually also rattle its tail and just like kind of mimic a rattlesnake. So it'll scare a predator. And so uh, the best way to ID snakes is to learn what snakes are in your area and what they typically lo look like. So I definitely recommend to use a whole body approach. Um, you know, look at their color, their pattern, the size of the snake, the location that they're at, and also what kind of habitat are they in? Are they in a tree? Are they near a stream? Um, where is a snake? Um, also, you can research some range maps online through uh, decent uh, resources. Um, there's herps of nc.org, um, ncherps.org, and ncwildlife.org. I'd say out of this list of websites that um, herps of nc.org is definitely my favorite. It's actually put together by our NC State um, herpetologist and Davidson College. So it's very thorough. It's a great resource for anyone that's wanting to learn how to ID snakes. And then also you can use some field and identification guides. Um, I definitely recommend um, Snakes of the Southeast. It's this book right here. You can get this on Amazon or maybe a bookstore or you can go to your library and check this out. Um, but yeah, those are great um, ID guides. So here in North Carolina, we have six different uh, venomous snakes. And this would consist of the timber or cane brake rattlesnake, um, the eastern coral snake, the cottonmouth snake, the copperhead, the Carolina pygmy rattlesnake, and the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. So first I'm gonna talk about the Carolina pygmy rattlesnake. Um, this is the smallest species of rattlesnake in the US and Actually, this is my favorite snake species um, to actually see in the wild. And that's due to all of the color phases that they can come in. Um, this is the same, all of the same species and their color can vary by which habitat you find them in. Um, their appearance, so they basically have a row of dark spots running down their backs. And in, individuals, again, can vary in color based on habitat or genetics. Um, the rattle can be small or non-existent. Um, this is one rattlesnake that if you come across, you probably won't hear its rattle at all because they're probably missing their rattle. Um, and the young actually have yellow tails here on the, the, the one that's red. You can see like its tail here. It's kind of yellow, it's starting to develop its little rattle, but it doesn't have a rattle when they're young. And then, so these are really small stakes. So their average length is 18 inches. But um, on the right here, this individual, the gray one, that is actually an anery morph. So it is, its color is based on its genetics. So this is, a, a, it's a mutation that happened in its genetics that made it this color. Um, these are extremely rare to find them in this color at all. Um, on, in the middle here, there's a, I call them the lavender phase. This phase can be seen in the Sand Hills region of North Carolina and down into South Carolina. Um, the gray individual here on the left is actually from the Sand Hills region that the purple one was found at. So within the same habitat, they can vary colors. 
And then down here on the bottom, the red individual, which is probably the most popular color phase out of these rattlesnakes is uh, it's red. It's really striking. Um, you can find these on the coast of North Carolina. So this particular individual was in a place called Hyde County, um, but you can see these all over the coast, even down to Wilmington, Carolina Beach area. In the middle here, we have an orange individual. This individual is from, I believe, Scotland County here in North Carolina. So that's the Sand Hills region. Um, and then on the right, this individual, I call them the pink phase. They are found in Hyde County along with the red phase individual. So those are really fun to uh, look for. But in North Carolina, you can find the species of rattlesnake mostly on the coastal plains in the Sand Hills region. And then here in the Piedmont, we actually don't have any. So you don't have to worry about coming across this snake um, here in our region. There is, however, a relic population at Crowder's Mountain, which is around three hours away to the west here. Um, and yeah, so you don't have to worry about those here, but their habitat where you'll usually find them is in pine flatwoods and areas with scrub oak. So that is typically what you see in the Sand Hills region. Um, on the coast, you're gonna find them in swamps and moist lowlands and on the floodplains. And so here's a range map so you can kind of see it better, um, but we're in this area right here in the middle in the Piedmont, but they're mainly just in the sand hills and on the coastal plain. And then right here is the only spot you'll find them in the Piedmont. Um, so bite information. So due to its small size, a bite from a pygmy rattlesnake is generally considered less serious than its larger relatives. Um, to the right here, you can actually see how big these snakes are um, compared to um, this individual, very small. And this is a, a, a uh, fully grown adult rattlesnake. Um, a bite from one of these snakes is usually not life-threatening to people or pets, but it can be more serious with children and uh, smaller pets. Um, a bite from one of these snakes is very, very painful, and most bites occur when the snakes are intentionally handled or accidentally stepped on. But as with all venomous snake bites, the victim should seek immediate medical care at a hospital and treat, uh, experienced in treating uh, snake bites. And so next we have the timber or cane break rattlesnake. Um, this snake is very, um, it's an icon within the reptile community and in the national community about 200 years ago. So this snake was um, when the United States was choosing a, I guess, animal mascot for the United States, the timber rattlesnake was actually considered. And that snake was almost picked over the bald eagle, which is our uh, national emblem now. So just a little interesting fact about these snakes. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. So the appearance description. So usually these are really heavy bodied snakes. These guys are gigantic. Um, they can get up to six feet, um, but you'll typically see a full grown adult um, reaching four feet on average. Um, so usually they have dark cross bands or chevrons on a lighter background. Um, this fate, this uh, individual to the right here is actually a dark phase individual. You typically won't see these. This is a genetic mutation. I'd say it happens with one of, out of every 10 individual species um, here, but um, these individuals can vary in color. Um, they can also be super, super white, or they can even be yellow in some cases. Um, but usually they have a black tail, but variation can occur. And this is one rattlesnake where you will definitely hear the rattle. I mean, they're, when they rattle their tails, it's super loud. And you'll definitely be able to notice if you step near one and they start rattling their tail. So here in North Carolina, you can find these um, in the coastal plain. This is gonna be pretty much everywhere past Sampson County, um, which is to the east of us. Um, these guys like to hang out in like agricultural fields um, out past Sampson County. They like to hunt for the mice, so like in watermelon fields and sweet potato fields. So. But you can also see these snakes in the mountain um, region and the sand hills region. But within these two regions here, they're pretty uncommon. Um, 
you typically probably won't have to worry about them too much there, but in the Piedmont um, where we are, they're extremely rare. Um, there is a relic population in Granville County, which is north of us, but they, the people that live near where this relic population is, they typically don't see these snakes. So you definitely don't have to worry about the snake here in our area. Um, um, their habitat is, so they typically hang out in forested areas, um, swamps and floodplains on the coast, but, and of course you can see them in agricultural fields, as I mentioned earlier. And here is a range map. So you can kind of see everywhere that they occur. And up here, the little dot that's out in the middle, like an island is Granville County. So um, the bite information about a timber canebrake rattlesnake, typically um, these snakes are pretty docile and they will only bite as a last resort. Um, they usually don't bite unless intentionally handled or accidentally stepped on. So the venom from the snake is extremely toxic and deaths from their bites have been recorded. So if you get bit by one of these, please, please, please head to a hospital um, experienced in treating snake bites. And next um, we have the copperhead. So this is the most common uh, venomous snake in North Carolina. And this is the one that you should definitely be concerned with here in the Piedmont. They occur in every county in North Carolina. You'll definitely find them in your backyard, your front yard, you know, I see these guys all the time. Um, they're everywhere. So for their appearance, so they're often heavy bodied snakes. Um, they're usually marked with uh, dark brown hourglass shaped crossbands on a light brown or gray background. This individual here is a great example of what a typical copperhead here in the Piedmont will look like. Um, their underbelly is a mix of like black and white markings. Um, so if you flip these guys over, they look like a completely different snake. Um, and then the young do look like adults, but they have a yellow tail. And then, so they can get up to, I've seen rattles or uh, copperheads that have been four feet long, but on average, you'll usually find them being like two and a half to 2.75 feet long. Um, and again, they're in every county in North Carolina and their habitat is pretty much anywhere. Um, I found them hiding out under trash bags, um, under logs, under pieces of tin, pieces of wood. They just, they get everywhere. So be wary of these guys. Um, so I thought that I would include some more ID tips on the copperhead since they are the one venomous snake you really need to worry about here in the Piedmont. So um, do not base uh, your cop the copperhead appearance solely on a Hershey kiss patterns. I don't know if any of you have heard of this before, but um, people will say to ID a copperhead based on the Hershey kiss pattern. But, you know, um, although most copperheads do have this Hershey kiss pattern, um, the pattern on copperheads can vary. Here on the left, you can see two individuals that were actually found under the same hiding place. Um, on the bottom, you have a typical Hershey kiss copperhead. And then on the top, you have a copperhead that doesn't have a Hershey kiss pattern and it's actually striped. So that's why I recommend using a whole body approach when uh, IDing snakes. And so there's several species of snakes in North Carolina that are often mistaken as copperheads. Um, and that is unfortunate because many of these snakes are killed unintentionally or int intentionally because they are often confused with copperheads. Um, so on the left here is a black rat snake. So when these guys are adults, they're uh, straight black, but when they're babies, like this juvenile, they have patterns. And so I could see how it gets very confusing um, when it, when you're trying to figure out if it's a copperhead or not. But this guy, to me, as many as I've seen, doesn't look like a copperhead at all. And then next to that is a mole king snake. Um, these guys are harmless as well, and they're misidentified as copperheads all the time. And then to the right of that is a DK's brown snake, very harmless. Um, and then various uh, water snake species are misidentified as copperheads all the time. So again, use a whole body approach when IDing a snake. Um, that is a great way to just ID everything and to keep you and your family safe. 
Um, so the bite information about a copperhead. So generally a bite from a copperhead is not very serious as it is very rarely fatal to humans. I, I think I don't quote me on this, but the last time I looked, I think there's only been like two to five cases where someone has died from a copperhead bite, but I'm not sure of that now, but the case fatality rate is very, very low. Um, Usually uh, these snakes do not inject very much venom when they bite, if at all. Um, if they bite you and they don't inject any venom, that's called a dry bite. But if you receive a wet bite from these guys, um, it's, the bite will typically uh, cause local t tissue destruction. But as with all venomous snake bites, um, you should definitely seek uh, immediate medical care. And so next we have the Eastern Coral Snake. Um, so this snake is referred to as the American cobra. Um, that's because it's in the same families as cobra, which is Alepidae. Um, but here in North America, we don't have any cobras. So, um, uh, so it's uh, appearance description. So these are really slender bodied, smooth snakes. Um, this tricolor species has red, yellow, and black rings. Um, they're very, very shiny if they're not in shed. So typically, uh, venomous snakes here in North Carolina are not shiny. Um, they have really rough scales. And these guys, if you can see here on the bottom picture, it's actually reflecting to light the light. And it looks like a little rainbow iridescence color. Um, and so their average length, these guys don't get very big, um, can be two feet. So here in North Carolina, these snakes are super, super rare. Um, I haven't seen one of these snakes in North Carolina, and I probably never will. Um, Usually they're only encountered at Carolina Beach State Park by park rangers every free few years. Um, and that would be on the coast here. And so their habitat is plain paint, uh, pine flatwoods and areas with scrub oak. So they're at Carolina Beach State Park only pretty much so. Um, and here's a range map so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Um, there's a lot of debate over this map in the reptile community. Um, there's a possible presence of these guys all the way up to here, and there's predi predicted presences, but I personally don't think that they're anywhere in any of these areas. The only confirmed presence have been in these three spots here, and I don't think that they've found any individuals in the last, like, 20 years in these two purple spots beside each other, but down where Carolina Beach State Park is, they've found a few individuals every few years or so, but, um, you or I will probably never see one here. Uh, we're definitely not gonna see one in the Piedmont, um, so no worries. So in North Carolina, um, we have two species of snakes that are often mistaken as Eastern coral snakes. Um, that would be the scarlet snake here on the left and then the scarlet king snake on the right. Um, they're both two uh, harmless tricolor species. Um, and then you can see how different they actually look from a coral snake. So, and then, so um, the one, a great ID tip for these guys, or not a not so great ID tip for these guys, like some people recommend remembering the rhyme, red and black friend of Jack, uh, red and yellow kill a fellow. Um, I definitely don't recommend this because I can't, even remember it myself. Um, you can get it confused. You can get it mixed up. Um, and so I, I, uh, I definitely don't recommend that. And variants within this species has been documented. Here on the left, you can see a species that doesn't really have yellow rings. Um, it's pretty much missing all of them except the one on its head. And down here on the bottom, there's actually a species that are actually an individual that doesn't have any rings whatsoever. So it's not, that's not a great rhyme to remember. And then just to note, um, this rhyme here actually doesn't apply to any snakes in Mexico through South America. So this, I guess this rhyme can only be used in um, the United States. So, but don't do it because it's not a good idea. Next slide, please. Oops, sorry, I'm doing this. Okay, um, a, so the bite information, a uh, coral snake bite is extremely serious because their venom attacks the central nervous system and can cause death. Um, a bite from one of these guys is something you don't wanna 
mess around with. Um, again, they're in the same family as the cobra. Um, their bites can be very, very painful, and most of their bites occur when they're uh, intentionally handled. But as with all venomous snake bites, uh, the victim should seek immediate medical care. And so next we have the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Um, so this uh, snake is actually the largest rattlesnake in the world. So here in North Carolina, we have the largest rattlesnake species in the world versus the smallest uh, rattlesnake species in the world. So um, their appearance, uh, they're very, very heavy bodied. These guys are gigantic. They can get up to six feet, but on average, you will probably see them uh, being four feet long. Um, the on their backs uh, and where they get their name from, they have dark diamonds outlined in a black pattern. Um, and then on their face, they have two light lines on the sides of their heads um, and they have an extremely large rattle on their tail. So you can definitely hear this rattle when you approach one or come in contact with one. Um, in North Carolina, these snakes are super, super rare within the uh, state. Um, you nor I will probably uh, never see one. And there's only been a few individuals that, or there are only a few individuals that remain um, due to habitat destruction and uh, uh, that and killing of adults. Um, so usually these guys are only um, encountered at Camp Lejeune by researchers. Um, and these snakes are like heavily protected in our state. And you have to have like so many permits to like even research them. Um, and so their habitat is pine flatwoods. So the bite information about the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. So it's extremely serious because their venom is very destructive to tissues and can be fatal. Um, I, this is one snake I definitely would not want to get bitten by. Due to its large size, um, a bite results in heavy injection of venom, and you you're you're more than likely probably going to die if you get bit by one of these snakes. They're they're no joke. Um, but most bites occur when the snakes are intentionally handled or accidentally stepped on. And so, again, with all venomous snake bites, uh, the victim should seek immediate medical care at a hospital experienced in treating snake bites. Um, and so the next species here is the cottonmouth. Um, this is America's only semi-aquatic viper. So you're, you're gonna find these guys near water. Um, so their appearance, so they're very heavy bodied. Um, they have dark cross bands on olive to dark, back, a dark brown background. Um, the adults can be entirely black and the young can have or have yellow tails and are offish reddish brown. So here on the right, you'll actually see a young individual on the top versus an adult on the bottom. Um, and they have a white coloration in their mouths. So every time I see one of these snakes and I approach it, they have no issue showing you the inside of their mouths. So, I mean, even the babies, they are very, very defensive, um, very willing to show you the inside of their mouth. So they're pretty easy to ID. Um, and so their average length is three feet in size. So here in North Carolina, um, You'll typically find them on the coastal plain um, and in the Sand Hills region, but here in the Piedmont, you're hardly ever going to come across them because we are on the edge of their range. Um, and so the snakes that you're seeing at like Lake Johnson or um, uh, Lake Jordan or any of the, let's see, any of the big lakes around here, you're probably just seeing um, harmless water snakes not cottonmouths, and then their habitat, of course, is swamps, canals, rivers, and streams. And so some ID tips on these guys. Um, uh, harmless water snakes often get confused with cottonmouths, um, and so a great way to tell them apart is by looking at the lines on their heads. So here on the right, um, the top is actually a brown water snake, so their lines actually run vertical on their head, versus the copper heads lines, they're actually um, horizontal. And so just in my opinion, um, cotton mouths typically look really mean and scary and the water snakes usually look really nice. So, but they're easy to ID once you realize this, um, that there's a difference in the lines on their face. And so this is the range map, just so you can see what I was talking about, how we're just on the edge of their range. Um, they're 
I have some friends that have seen some cottonmouths down uh, at the very, very south uh, point of uh, Wake County, but they're very, very rare to come across in Wake County. Um, so, but they are all over the coast and in the sand hills. They're very, very common down there. And so the bite information about cottonmouth, so the bites can be very toxic and can be severe. Um, however, fatalities are rare with these guys. Um, most bites occur when the snakes are intentionally handled or accidentally stepped on. But as with, again, with, as with all venomous snake bites, the victim should uh, uh, seek immediate medical care. And so what do you do if you're bitten by a venomous snake? Well, you should do this. So try to ID, try to ID the offending snake if you can do so easily without putting yourself at risk or wasting valuable time. So I definitely just recommend if you do get bitten to grab your cell phone and if you can remember and take a picture of the snake um, and someone can ID it for you and um, that will definitely help the doctor know exactly what to do with your situation. Um, Call Carolina's Poison Center and 911 if necessary. Um, go inside, wash the bite with soap and water, um, and mark the leading edge of swelling on the skin and write the time beside of it. If you're wearing any jewelry on your hand, like any faint, uh, if any rings or bracelets or anything, please take those off um, because your hand is going to swell up, and you don't want jewelry on your hand if your hand swells up. And so. Cover the bite with a clean, dry dressing and um, get to the nearest hospital or emergency medical facility immediately. But please do not drive yourself um, because you could get dizzy and you could potentially pass out. And that's going to put other people at risk and yourself at risk. So and please, please, please try to stay calm. Um, so if you do get bit, um, don't do this. Don't pick the snake up or trap it. Um, wait for symptoms to appear or and. Do not wait for symptoms to appear and seek immediate medical attention. Um, don't take any pain relievers. Don't apply ice or immerse the wound in water. Please do not suck out the venom and do not cut the wound in any way and do not uh, apply a constrictive tourniquet. If you do this, what will happen is basically the venom will get trapped. Um, like if, let's say you get bit on the hand um, and you apply a tourniquet. If you do that, the venom will get trapped in your hand and it will stay there and you're more than likely going to have to have your hand amputated. So it's better to just let the venom go throughout your whole body versus uh, put leaving it in one spot. So. Um, and so what about a bite, a bite from a non-venomous snake? So the bite from a non-venomous snake is almost always harmless. I've been bitten by plenty of non-venomous species and it, it's usually not very painful at all. If anything, it feels like Velcro rubbing against your skin. Um, but after bitten, you should still clean the bite location with soap and water to prevent any chances of infections. And so how do we avoid snake bites? So when you're enjoying the great outdoors, such as hiking, gardening, um, be mindful of your surroundings. Pay attention. Um, wear long boots or long pants, boots, and gloves while working outside. These do offer some level of protection, but won't always prevent a bite from piercing the skin. Um, and be familiar with the snakes in your area when they are active and what habitat they live in. Um, do not handle any snakes unless you can positively ID them and feel safe doing so. And if um, you're walking outside at night, this is a great tip. Um, if you're walking outside at night and please, please carry a flashlight. Even myself, if I have to go outside and get something out of my car in the driveway, I always make sure to carry a light with me because you never know if there's going to be like a copperhead just hanging out outside. Um, many snakes are active at night and can potentially be stepped on. Um, so here on the right, you can actually see a massive rattlesnake crossing um, a road or at night around 8 p.m. Um, this is actually in Arizona. However, snakes here in North Carolina are very, very active at night. Um, I'd say that snakes are more active at night than they are during the day. So on the left here, you can actually see a perfect Hershey Kiss copperhead crossing the road at night. Um, 
This individual was, um, I'd say it was probably about four feet long um, and it was actually coming out of someone's front yard. And so this is one copperhead I definitely would not want to get bitten by just due to its size and the amount of venom it could potentially inject. And then here on the left or here on the right, you can actually uh, see a large black rat snake that I found. I'd say that this individual was about five and a half. So it was probably taller than me. It's not all the way stretched out here, but you definitely don't want to step on this guy if you go outside um, because the bigger the snake, the more painful the bite. Um, so this guy was actually relocated to the woods directly behind my house. Um, and so although snakes do cross a lot across the road a lot during the night and they're very active at night, you can find them crossing the road and very active during the daytime. Um, so walkers, runners, and bikers be alert. If you go on vacation to like the coastal plains and you wanna go run through or hike or anything on the road, just be mindful. Um, here on the uh, top left-hand corner, you can actually see a cane break rattlesnake crossing the road at midday. And on the right, you can actually see a Carolina pygmy rattlesnake crossing the road during the afternoon. Um, and then even, uh, so you can, on the left here, you can actually see a copperhead crossing the road during the afternoon. And these guys are definitely gonna be doing this in our area here in the Piedmont. And so um, how do we keep snakes out of our yard and home? Um, so there is no foolproof way to prevent snakes from entering one's property, but there are a few things you can do to lower the chances of coming across a snake. Um, so I recommend to keep a tidy yard and remove any shelter opportunities. This would include tarps, sheet wood, sheet tin, above, above ground pools, logs, brush piles. Snakes absolutely love all of these things. I've, I have found snakes in the weirdest spots. Um, I've found snakes under trash bags, like just, you know, just laying there and under street signs, billboards, um, mattresses that people have thrown out. I've, I found them everywhere. Um, limit any food resources for snakes. Um, always mow your grass and keep it short. Um, think before you landscape. Um, water gardens, koi ponds, mulch, lar uh, large rocks. Snakes absolutely love this type of habitat. So, and I thought this was a cool one. Um, you can rely on natural predators. What you'll have to do is you can install a tall perch pole for hawks, um, owls, etc. Um, be sure to seal the cracks and crevices on the house, sidewalks and foundations so no snakes can get into your home. And um, to note, uh, commercial snake repellents have not been thoroughly tested on snakes for effectiveness and are usually not recommended by herpetologists. You can use them. Will they work? Probably not. So. Um, and here's an example of what I'm talking about when you can <laughs> find snakes under everything. Um, so on the left, there's actually a copperhead here using a couch cushion as cover. So if you have some furniture outside and some wind, you know, we get like a horrible storm coming through and it blows off all of your uh, furniture or all of your cushions off your couches. Be sure to quickly pick those up and put them back on because, you know, you never know when a snake can just hide out under those. And then on the right here, this copperhead is actually using a uh, piece of sheet tin as cover. So, and then after that, we have a cane break rattlesnake that I found using a fallen billboard beside a restaurant on a busy, busy highway. Um, and so this snake was actually in Georgia, but this is one snake you don't want and you don't want to find in your yard hiding under something. You won't here in the Piedmont, but if you go to the coastal plains and you're hanging out at a place that has a bunch of wood or trash everywhere, just don't get near that stuff because you never know if you'll uh, find a rattlesnake under it. So, um, so if you find a snake in your house, um, it's more than likely going to be a black rat snake. Here on the left, um, I actually found a black rat snake um, climbing down a water drain on a local business. So you could see that they are excellent climbers and can find openings to your home very easily. Um, but if they find them, themselves in your home easily, they're just as likely to leave very easily as well. Um, you'll typically find them in attic spaces or basements trying to get warm in the wintertime or hunting for mice. Um, 
but if you're uncomfortable with them in your home, you can hire a trained professional to remove them for you. Um, please look for good animal removal services that will humanely remove and relocate these animals to a safe location. Uh, these guys are harmless. Um, they're probably some of my favorite snakes here in the Piedmont to see. Um, and I just, I really respect them and uh, you should too. And so if you find a snake in your yard, um, it's best, it's best to leave it alone um, as these animals are typically docile unless threatened. But um, if you really don't want it there, the most effective way to get it to move along is by spraying it with the water hose. Um, by doing this, this keeps you and the snake safe, since trying to kill the snake will often bring you close enough to getting bitten. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with doing that, you can also contact a, a good animal removal service. So here on the left, you can actually see a copperhead hiding under a rotting tree trunk. Uh, that was actually in my backyard so a few years ago. So. And so um, some, food th some food for thought. Um, so snakes play an important role in our ecosystem. They control the rodent population, which in turn controls the tick population. Um, this helps limit the spread of disease such as Lyme disease. So here on the right, you can actually see the transmission cycle of um, Lyme disease. And so when the snakes eat the rodents, this prevents future cases of Lyme disease within humans. So, um, and it's, it's, just, it's just best to be informed about the snakes that you, can, that you share your surroundings with. Um, so you can protect yourself, your family, and even the snakes themselves. Um, when I started um, looking for snakes in the wild, I think it took me around like a month or so to learn like what all of the snake species looked like here in North Carolina and I was able to ID them effectively. So, um, and of course, last but not least, um, no snake, venomous or not, deserves to die. Um, contact a good animal removal service instead of causing harm to a snake. Sadly, here in North Carolina, um, Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes have almost been completely extirpated from the state due to killing. So if you and I are educated on the subject of snakes, um, we can prevent things like this, things like this from happening um, to our local. We have some uh, technical problems. Hi, Jim Ping. Yeah, well, what's wrong? Thanks. Bye. Oh, I think she's going to freeze there. Yeah, I think. Okay, I guess you'll come back. Yeah. Rejoin. Just wait for a few minutes. Yeah. Maybe just because the fire is too big. And also take this time, if you have any questions, you can just uh, type in uh, the uh, chat room. So when Alicia comes back, and then we can just uh, you know answer those questions. Let me see. Alicia, I think she's she's come back. Again. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. My computer decided to kick me off as soon as I finished. So uh, sorry about that. No problem.
But yes, does anyone have any questions? So I have one question from Harry. So how to overcome the fears of snakes? So that's a good question. Um, I, when I started looking for snake or before I started looking for snakes, I was like very, very afraid of snakes, but I was fascinated by them. Um, I think the, when I started looking for snakes, I started looking for them um, with my partner. Um, and the more I was around uh, snakes and I would hold them um, and they wouldn't bite me. And they were pretty harmless. Like I just overcame my fear of snakes like that. I think that maybe if you go to a education, like a, maybe like museums or something when they have like reptile days and they allow you to hold non-venomous snake species. I think that's a great way to try to get over that fear. The more you interact with the animals, the less likely you are to be afraid of them. But please don't interact with like any wildlife unless you know exactly what you're doing and you can positively ID the species. So, um, and then from Elliot, what should you do if a snake approaches you? Um, so typically snakes aren't going to approach you um, by their own will. If a snake is coming near you, it probably doesn't really recognize that you're there. Um, snakes, um, I know here in North Carolina, um, a lot of people think that co cotton mouths will chase you, but they actually don't. They're, they're probably spooked by you and they're probably just trying to get away. Um, and they're going in the wrong direction, which is towards you rather than away from you. But yeah, definitely snakes don't typically approach you. Um, but if one does just, you can just step away. Um, they're definitely not going to like try to bite you or, uh, continue chasing you if you just step out of the way. Um, and then, so Angela, what is the most popular snake in Wake County? So I... The most popular snake in Wake County. So, hmm, I'd say that in the reptile community, um, it is a, it's kind of a goal for people to find a, an Eastern mud snake in Wake County, but I'd say overall, um, a copperhead is probably the most popular snake in uh, Wake County just because it's venomous and just because of the fear that everyone has for copperheads um, here in North Carolina. In, and then from Catherine, um, any recommendations of uh, good animal removal companies? Um, I, I would, I haven't had to call any before, um, but I think I had seen one when I looked on Google when I was putting this presentation together a few months ago, I can't remember the name of it, but if you go, I would just thoroughly research their websites. And if they say that they are very careful with the animals and um, they handle them very well and they move them to a better location. Also look at Google reviews for uh, these services too. And uh, that will help you make a decision. I can get back to you with some later. Um, I'll send these off to Sri Long and I can have them him send those to you. Um, and then a question from JJ, um, what should you do if you see a copperhead in the neighborhood street where people and kids often walk by? So this is a great question. Um, so I, so if you remove the snake, like if you call an animal uh, removal service and they remove the snake for you, if there's snakes already hanging out there, there's more than likely gonna be more snakes there. Um, which means that you're not ever able, you're not gonna be a, ever able to like remove them permanently. Um, I would just say to maybe just, continuously call the animal removal services um, and just make sure that everyone in the neighborhood has a clean and tidy yard 
Um, make sure that everyone always mows their grass really well because snakes love to hide out in like really tall grass. And uh, um, maybe you can even install some of those perch poles for hawks and owls and everything, but they're not, it's very hard to keep snakes out of a place permanently. Um, do you recommend to use snake repellent? So I personally uh, don't recommend it. Um, I've seen, there hasn't been the best uh, research for snake repellents. Um, I actually have some friends out in Arizona uh, that have a snake removal service. Um, and they've actually found rattlesnakes there sleeping on tops on the top of like of a bag of snake repellent and they definitely don't recommend it and it doesn't work um, out there so and i've also read a article written by a herpetologist where he had put a snake on one side of a cage and then a mouse on another side of the cage and he had put it snake repellent in the middle and so the snake crossed over the snake repellent and went and got the mouse anyway. Um, so yeah, I definitely don't recommend those, but you can try. Um, and so question from JJ, uh, can we use hand sanitizer instead of soap if bitten? Um, I actually don't know that for sure. Um, I can get back to you on that though. Um, so Another question, which hospital in our area is experienced in treating snake bites? So this is a great question. Um, so I definitely think that most of the hospitals here are good at treating snake bites, especially UNC um, and Duke Hospital. But I, if you go out on the coast, for instance, uh, my partner actually got bit by a rattlesnake on the coast that he accidentally stepped on. And so he had to go to a hospital out there. He got bit by a Carolina pygmy rattlesnake and he had to go to the hospital um, out um, in a very rural area. And so that hospital had no idea what to do. So they uh, instantly treat, uh, transported him to a larger hospital in a larger city um, where they were more experienced. I would just say that if you're on the coast in a, or in a rural, a very rural area, um, just be really aware of this. Like if you get bit by a snake, you, there's a venomous snake, there's a possibility that the hospital that you're nearest might not know how to treat it. Um, but I would say like a hospital, like based in like a larger city would know most of the time. Um, and so let's see another question. Can we use snake repellent to protect the snake? Um, I, uh, I'm not sure about this question. I, I wouldn't think so. Um, and the next question, what is the common, what is the common snake in Winston-Salem area? So, um, in Winston-Salem, there's going to be a lot of copperheads. There's going to be Probably a lot of uh, Eastern king snakes there, which are the black and white snakes. Um, those snakes are actually good to have around in your yard because they eat other snakes. So they will eat copperheads. Um, so if you see those snakes, definitely just leave them alone because they're great snakes to have. And pretty much um, you're going to have just little fossorial snakes like uh, Eastern worm snakes um, and other smaller snake species there. Um, and then talking, another question, so talking black snakes, people often say they are garden snakes, harmless. This may not be true from your presentation, right? Um, so black snakes here in North Carolina, there's two different species that are black. That's going to be your black racer and your black rat snake. I would assume that people are referring to um, garden snakes. I, mean, I assume they're referring to the eastern black rat snake, which is the one that you saw climbing down the pole. Um, those snakes are harmless, um, and but here in North Carolina, we do have a snake called the garter snake, which is a um, a small snake that is striped. Um, but all of these snake species, all the black snakes here in North Carolina, um, are harmless. But you can get uh, a, a adult uh, cottonmouth snakes that are completely black, and those are not um, those are uh, venomous. And so uh, can I keep black rat snake or those non-venomous as pets? Yes, you can actually. Um, 
a lot of these snake species that are non-venomous make great pets. Um, but I think my favorite snake I've kept that is non-venomous from uh, North Carolina is probably a black rat snake or a rough green snake. So um, what is the common, common snake in Orange County? So in Orange County, we have a ton of copperheads. Um, I haven't really seen a lot of Eastern King snakes here. I don't think this is a great area for them here. Um, there's a lot of mole king snakes, a lot of um, rough green snakes. Um, there's just a lot of the common Piedmont species, everything pretty much except the Eastern uh, king snake here in Orange County. Um, uh, and another question is black snake keeps away copperhead snake. Um, so the, so again, I mentioned that there's two um, separate species of black rat or black snakes here in North Carolina. You have the black racer and the black rat snake. Um, so the rat snake doesn't eat other snakes. Uh, it typically eats like rats and birds and other small rodents. Um, so, but the black racer actually will eat other snakes. So a black uh, racer will actually eat copperheads. And if you see either black snake, but you're confused on which snake it is, um, you don't, uh, I would probably leave them alone because they're harmless. But yeah, a black racer will eat copperhead snakes. Okay, uh, no more questions. Uh, Alicia, I have a question. Uh, in my childhood, and the adults always uh, tell the child, the children, say, we walk uh, outside, take a walk, you just uh, hold a stick. And to, you know, kind of tap the, the ground, and that will frighten the, uh, the snakes away. Is that a practical? Uh, actually, yes, that is a great idea. Um, and you can do that. And I would also, it would also be helpful to probably take your stick and maybe, you know, hit some plants and stuff around and like rattle bushes and stuff because snakes can't actually hear the way that they hear, I guess, is through, uh, vibrations that they feel on the ground and, uh, vibrations around them. So, yeah, that's a that's a good uh, tip. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question is, uh, I'll say, uh, people also say the smokers will uh, kind of uh, the snakes will keep away from the smokers. Is that right? Um, you know, I'm actually not sure about that one. That that is something I can get back to you though. Yeah. So uh, in my uh, childhood, they say. Okay, you just hold a cigarette in your hands, and the snake will, you know, get away from you. Right. It's I'm not, not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure of that. I know that I have friends that work in like uh, fire ecology, like down in the Sand Hills and Florida, and I know that they do controlled burns down there. Um, and they've always told me that snakes are typically the last to leave when a fire. When they're when they're you know starting the controlled burns down there and there's smoke everywhere and the snakes are finally like the last to leave so I don't know I don't really know so okay, okay. we have one more question right? okay um let's see how to keep copperheads away um so yeah just just make sure you keep a tidy yard um and keep your grass mode um and like if you have like a bird feeder for instance and this is what i mean by keeping rodents out of your yard um if you have a bird feeder birds are typically really messy so they'll knock seeds and etc down onto the ground which will attract rodents so if you want a bird feeder in your yard maybe keep it further away from where you're very active at in your yard that way, if there are rodents on the ground and if there's snakes hunting near the bird feeder, you won't step on them. Um, and let's see, I am afraid there is a snake nest in my backyard. There are several holes in my flower garden area. What shall I do with these holes? I saw snakes often in my backyard. So I don't know what those holes could be. Um, typically, snakes are 
snakes don't really have, most snakes don't really have like a, a den area, like a snake nest. However, they will use those holes to get back to underneath the ground. Um, I'm just wondering what the holes could be in your flower garden area, because it might be that you have uh, like uh, native uh like bumblebee nest or carpet or not carpenter bees but like mason bees maybe or other types of pollinators living there or it could also be like maybe rodents of some type if it's rodent rodents that's probably why you're seeing snakes in your yard um I would maybe call like an animal removal service just to have them come to check things out for you um but I'm not sure what those holes could be and then Someone found a picture, and let me download that to see what that is. Okay, and what did they say? Let's see. So, found this uh, the other day in the yard. Is this a diamondback? So no, actually that is a DK's brown snake. So that snake is um, a snake that is very common here in North Carolina, and those snakes actually get confused with copperheads. So here in the Piedmont, you're not going to see any uh, diamondbacks. They're only in Camp Lejeune, um, which is on the coast in Jacksonville, and they're heavily protective and super endangered in our state. I think there's probably less than 20 individuals here in North Carolina of the diamondback. Okay, uh, no more questions, right? So, uh, okay. So now uh, it comes to the end of this uh, webinar. Again, uh, thank you very much, Alicia, for taking time to share your uh, knowledge and uh, experiences in snake safety and other useful information. I'm sure. Uh, this information is very helpful to all the families. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this webinar was recorded and will be available on your knees. And also thank you, uh, the audience, to come to this meeting and also ask uh, uh, so many excellent questions. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Jianping Yang the chair of the CAFA board for Zoom technical uh, support of this meeting and uh, enjoy the rest uh, of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye.